Hello, this, this video shouldn't be too long. This is on the Iraq war. This is a very important topic because it, it happened while you were probably still alive. You might have been in diapers, but it, it happened. And a lot of the adults in your life were directly affected by this war. And you have teachers who were there and who suffer from this war. It happened in 2003. And this guy, he is President George W. Bush. He was from Texas. He was the governor of Texas. And he was president in the 2000s. Uh, he was president through the year 2008 when Barack Obama won the election and became president in 2009. All right. So what about the Iraq war? What was that all about? Why did we do this? Well, let's go, let's go look at a little bit of a history. Now, this is a joke. This is, um, you know, this is from the Star Wars Episode 2 poster, and it's just a joke about how the Iraq War is just part two of the Persian Gulf War. Um, first of all, I want you to know that the United States and Iraq do go back to the Persian Gulf War. Remember, Iraq invaded Kuwait. And the United States under George Herbert Walker Bush had the Persian Gulf War to liberate Kuwait from Iraq. And we did not destroy the Iraqi army. We did not get rid of Saddam Hussein. And we did not take over Iraq in the Persian Gulf War. So Iraq is still there after the Persian Gulf War. And Iraq did... Um, they did threaten Israel. Israel is a friend of the United States for good or bad. And during that Persian Gulf War, they launched Scud missiles at Israel. And some of these missiles could have had some chemical weapons on them. Okay. So Iraq was a danger to our friends, the United States friends. And they and Iraq was a danger to its own people. Okay. In the 1990s, after the Persian Gulf War, the United States was in a low level conflict with Iraq. Iraq shot at US jets almost daily during the 1990s, and the Air Force would shoot back. Uh, they had a trouble shooting down our planes because we have a pretty good Air Force, the United States does. The reason we, the United States was flying over Iraq is because Saddam Hussein was killing his own people. He would um, go into these swamplands and drop chemical weapons on the Kurds in the north and the Shia Muslims in the south. He was basically committing genocide. And the United States established a no-fly zone and said that any planes that were flying in the north of Iraq or in the southern Iraq would be shot down. And so the United States Air Force throughout the 90s was flying over Iraq, and sometimes the Iraqis would shoot at our planes. And I don't think any Iraqi planes were shot down, but they were shot at on a regular basis. Also, in 1993, Bill Clinton was president, and Saddam Hussein learned that George Herbert Walker Bush was in Saudi Arabia visiting the American troops that were left over there from the Persian Gulf War. And, or it might have been in Kuwait, but it was in that area. Saddam Hussein sent some of his spies and his special forces to assassinate former President George Herbert Walker Bush. Now, as you can imagine, American nationalism, you don't attempt to kill one of our former presidents. So what did President Clinton do? He took their intelligence center, Iraqi intelligence center, and he just destroyed the entire thing. It was probably with a Tomahawk missile. I mean, he just blew that sucker up. And after this, Saddam Hussein did not try to do anything else like similar to this. You don't try to kill a former president of the United States. And President Clinton did respond to that. 
So Congress and the Clinton White House authorized the CIA to work towards getting rid of Saddam Hussein in 1998. So uh, Clinton is ratcheting up, you know, and this is only a few years before the Iraqi war. So the United States has had enough of Saddam Hussein. So the United States is trying to work towards getting rid of him without a full scale war, you know, maybe get the spies to do it or something like that. In 1998, you had what's called Operation Desert Fox. And basically, it was a low-level war. It was like over the weekend or over a few days, hundreds of airstrikes against Saddam Hussein's Iraq took place as a result of his violations of the no-fly zone. Now, is this in the history books? No, I'm just telling you that there was a buildup before the Iraq war and that we weren't just at peace before the buildup of the Iraq war. Okay, stuff happened. Then... On September 11th, 2001, the September 11th attacks happened. President Bush was president. And so I want you to understand that after the 9-11 attacks and after the United States invaded Afghanistan and that the war in Afghanistan was pretty much over as far as the heavy battles go, the United States was basically very much on edge. It was a very scary time in American history. And the United States was basically looking for another target. Who's going to attack us next? Okay. Will it be the North Koreans? Will it be Iran? Or will it be Iraq? And so the United States looked at Iraq and saw Saddam Hussein as an enemy of the United States. And this man had an obvious hatred toward the United States. Unlike Al-Qaeda, that's the organization that attacked us on September 11th. Unlike Al-Qaeda, Saddam Hussein had billions of dollars in oil revenue. Saddam Hussein killed his own people with chemical weapons. Saddam Hussein tried to kill the president's dad. So you can see this is personal. For President George W. Bush. Saddam Hussein has in the past worked to build a nuclear device. Saddam Hussein refused to cooperate with UN weapons inspectors who were there to ensure he wasn't making chemical weapons. He was playing games with the UN weapons inspectors. That didn't look good on the press. It didn't look good to the United States. And Saddam Hussein threatened our Middle Eastern friends, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. So from, pres from the United States perspective, and not everyone agreed at the time, but, but from President Bush's perspective, Iraq was a danger to the United States and that we need to do something about it. And after September 11th attacks, it's like we, the United States was very on edge after the September 11th attacks. We were constantly afraid. This is what we were afraid of. We were afraid that Saddam Hussein was going to somehow work with Al Qaeda and to attack us with chemical weapons. That's what we were afraid of. Okay. So if you really want to understand why we went to war in Iraq, let's look at a few quotes from President Bush. This was September 12th, 2002 a year after 9-11. Right now, Iraq is expanding and improving facilities that were used for the production of biological weapons. Iraq has made several attempts to buy high-strength aluminum tubes used to enrich uranium for a nuclear weapon. Okay, whether he's right or wrong, this is what President Bush said. Okay, and he said this to the United Nations. Here's another quote. It possesses and produces chemical and biological weapons. It is seeking nuclear weapons. And surveillance photos reveal that the regime is rebuilding facilities that it had used to produce chemical and biological weapons. Okay, so President Bush is talking smack about Iraq. So the United States Congress, which which had a lot of Democrats in it. I mean, it was like a lot of people voted for this war resolution. 
In 2002, Congress voted to authorize the use of force against Iraq. It stated that Iraq, quote, developed and used weapons of mass destruction, harbored and supported terrorists, committed outrageous human rights abuses, and defied the just demands of the United Nations and the world. Okay. Well, okay, so now I hope you have a, a little bit better understanding as to why we attacked Iraq. So in March of 2003, the United States, with a few other friends, England, for example, but a lot of nations did not support this war. This was a very unpopular war, and it still is. But yeah, I've got a few pictures of the Iraq war. And it was a relatively short war, um, but, it, it, but it happened. And this war was not a big sand pit with camels. Okay, it happened in cities. And it was up close and personal at times. Okay, this picture looks like a soldier is kicking down a door, but I don't think so. Um, but certainly the soldier is using his foot to push open a door. And what do they see on the other side? What looks to me like a father and a kid. So you can see, you can imagine how scared soldiers were. And a lot of soldiers would die doing this. Okay, I have a, a teacher friend who suffers from PTSD who used to work at our high school. And I said, what happened to you? Why did you get injured? He said, let's just say I kicked down the wrong door. And so he didn't want to talk about it. That's his business. So the war cost $2 trillion. Okay, so that's $2 million million. So it affected our economy. It affected our economy. Saddam Hussein was captured and he was killed. He wasn't killed by the Americans, he was killed by the Iraqis. Keep in mind that the Iraqis did not like Saddam Hussein. So the death toll of Americans is about 4,500 soldiers. It's almost a million Iraqis, okay? But that's not really what's important. What's important is also the injured, the psychologically injured, the actual injured, you see Iraqi vets walking around with one leg or no legs. And then you've got the PTSD from the war. That's, that's a major cost too. So this is what I have students write down. What is the Iraq war? 2003, George W. Bush. It was a preemptive strike against Iraq. I'll explain what that means in a second. Got rid of Saddam Hussein, led to poor U.S. economy. Now, it wasn't some major depression or anything, but it did affect the American economy. Okay, so now why did we attack Iraq? It was a preemptive attack. Bush attacks Iraq before they attack us. Okay, before Iraq helps terrorists to attack us. Bush felt strongly because of Saddam's past the Iraqi leader would give weapons of mass destruction to terrorists to use on our cities. Bush did not want to wait for another 9-11, so we attacked Iraq, took over, and tried to create a model democracy in the Middle East. That was the goal. That was the hope. In other words, the United States was hoping to do to Iraq what we did to Japan after World War II. It was a fantasy, but that's what we were hoping. So, criticisms of the Iraq War, and there were plenty, and there still are. Number one, faulty intelligence. Our spies and British spies told us that there were weapons of mass destruction all over Iraq. But you know what? We never found any, even after the war, we never found any evidence of Saddam Hussein building chemical weapons or nuclear weapons. So our intelligence was bad. Number two, and this is important, preemptive wars are illegal. You can't just go around attacking countries because you think they might attack you in the future. 
okay? One rule that the United Nations has is that it is illegal to go to war unless your country is in immediate danger. I mean, it's kind of like you shoot your neighbor because you think they might shoot you later. You can't do that. Of course, the United States did. Um, here's another um, criticism. The Iraq war fueled terrorism. Now, let me explain this. Um, we thought that Iraq was a hotbed for Al Qaeda and a hotbed for terrorists that were going to attack us in the future. That turned out to be wrong. It turns out that Iraq hated Al Qaeda. But after we invaded Iraq, Iraq ended up being a very much a safe place for Al Qaeda, ISIS, and other terrorist groups that hate the United States and our and our friends. So terrorism actually got worse after we invaded Iraq. And here's another criticism that the war was about oil. Okay, and here's a political cartoon that's making fun of Bush for saying why we're going to Iraq, that it's all about oil. And you know what? Oil did have oil did have a role. I mean, let's be honest. If Iraq didn't have any oil and and the Persian Gulf War wouldn't have happened, uh, Kuwait had a lot of oil, Saudi Arabia has a lot of oil. And the point is, is that oil played a big part because a lot of bad things happen in other parts of the world that we don't get involved in. Why? Because there's no oil there. So I don't want to say that it was just about oil, but to say that it wasn't about oil is is ridiculous too. So the answer is sort of. There's a lot of oil in that area, and the United States wanted to protect its interest in oil. You could say that the United States went to war in Iraq to protect all of these oil companies. Okay. However, oil was not the primary reason to invade Iraq or Afghanistan. Um, and another thing I want you to keep in mind that the oil prices didn't drop. In 2006, this was, this was gas prices. Now I know that gas and oil prices aren't 100% connected, but I remember paying over four bucks a gallon back in 2006 at some times. But the war in Iraq did not drop the price of oil. So it's, it wasn't just oil. That's all I'm saying. And number five, Iraq was not a threat to the United States. Now that's an opinion, not a fact, but Iraq had no means to attack the people of the United States. Their Scud missiles could not reach the United States. They could certainly reach our bases in the Middle East, um, but certainly they were not a direct and immediate threat to the United States. So that is a criticism. It's an opinion, not a fact. So something to think about. However, Saddam Hussein was a threat to the region. He already invaded Kuwait, threatened Saudi Arabia, and launched Scud missiles at Israel during the first Persian Gulf War. Hussein could, in theory, give weapons of mass destruction to terrorists to attack the United States. And Saddam Hussein was certainly a threat to his own people, and he certainly was a dictator. So, about a year after the Iraq War started, President Bush made this big speech, and with this big banner, mission accomplished. And of course, he gets criticized for that a lot because there are a lot of American troops who died after this big pronouncement was made. Um, so the war carried on, and it wasn't always just a war. It was a lot of, you know, trying to rebuild the country and trying to, you know, get along with the people. But remember that, you know, a lot of soldiers died at, even when this was going on. Okay. And I mean, a lot of roadside bombs, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of sniping, a lot of, a lot of people died after the major war was over. 
So it was it was a lot of people that died, and it wasn't just the 4,500 that died. It was the wounded, and it was the psychologically wounded. Okay, it wasn't just that. And let's not forget, almost a million Iraqis died in this war, too. Okay, so let's try this multiple choice question off the EOC. After the attacks on September 11, 2001, how did U.S. foreign policy change? Okay, hit the space bar if you want to do this by yourself. The answer is A. The administration authorized preemptive strikes against nations sponsoring terrorism. Okay, now I don't like that answer because Iraq did not sponsor terrorism, but we're Texas, so you know that, that that's the answer to the question that that test gave, and that is the best answer. All right, here's another question off of the EOC. It's a speech from President George W. Bush. Look at the date, February 2003. Okay, so remember the Iraq war was in March of 2003. So just to give you some context. So I'm gonna read it in Bush's voice. Bringing stability and unity to a free Iraq will not be easy. Yet that is no excuse to lead the Iraqi regime's torture chambers and poison labs in operation. Any future the Iraqi people choose for themselves will be better than the nightmare world that Saddam Hussein has chosen for them. How did the goal described in this excerpt most affect the U.S. economy? So in other words, us rebuilding Iraq and going to Iraq and, and rebuilding it, what's that going to do to the American economy? Is it going to make it better or is it going to make it worse? The answer is C. The federal debt increased dramatically as a result of military spending. And that is it. Thank you very much.